I've got some tea here because I'm going to spill some tea um, in my spooky mug because it just felt appropriate today. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, all about my life after gastric bypass surgery. My name is Stephanie, and today I'm gonna complain. So if you're not in the mood, I'd probably skip this one. <laughs> More specifically, today I'm going to complain about Facebook and social media. I'm really kind of focusing on Facebook and Instagram at this point because that's really the only social media that I insert myself into in any way. If you're the kind of person who loves Facebook and Instagram, has no complaints, really gets irritated when somebody is upset with something about social media, Honestly, I seriously would skip this one. I don't mean to offend anybody and I don't mean to upset anybody <laughs> uh, by my video, but I do have some things that have been extremely bothersome that I think are important to keep in mind when we are um, looking at these people who've gone through surgery and, and looking at them for advice and um, looking at them as examples. Honestly, I'm kind of included in there, even though I'm not really talking about YouTube. Um, I do want to make sure that I am transparent, that I include myself in that. I, I try to make it clear to everybody that I, I would not use me as your sole example of surgery. And part of the reason is because I am doing my own thing and you should do your own thing as well. And everybody's bodies are different and everybody's life is different. And so, um, you know, you just can't compare. I like to get my information out there partially because it is just another piece of data in terms of what you may expect with surgery. Um, I really don't want anybody to hang on my words as going to be you know, their experience with surgery. I have no way to tell. Uh, my experience with surgery is completely different from what I saw on a lot of people's social media. And so it really is, is a very personal um, experience and process that is really hard to gauge in terms of what you are going to experience as an individual person. The obvious thing here, if we're talking about social media, is that everything is curated. And especially if we're talking about Instagram, everything is curated. And I think we all talk about this so much that it seems kind of like a no brainer at this point. Everyone kind of knows, but I don't know if like internally people are recognizing like, no, this is curated content. This is something that somebody has spent time and effort putting together to put out there into the world. And most of the time when we do that, we don't want to look like idiots or we don't want to look disgusting, or we don't want to look like we don't know what we're doing. And there's just, there's so many different factors in there. So you get a lot of people who are being very careful with the content that they're putting out there, which means that it's not a slice of life example of what somebody's going through. We need to keep that in mind. You, you really need to keep it in mind when you're going through social media. The angles at which people take pictures, the way people hide their loose skin, sometimes never even addressing it or talking about it. There's just a whole bunch of little things that you don't necessarily think about that can give you a warped picture of what extreme weight loss is going to look like and what your experience may be during that process. Also remember that there's a lot of people out there who are looking to make a buck after going through something like this. How many things have you seen on Instagram, for example, where somebody is telling you their story on how they lost weight and then telling you to sign up for something that they're putting out there or buy their program or buy their product or whatever it ends up being. There's so much of that. And you have to remember in a situation like that, that this person's sole goal is to 
sell product or sell whatever it is that they're selling to you. Sometimes that's selling an idea or selling trust uh, that, that they went through this process and, and you can talk with them and get one-on-one -on -one coaching and pay for that. And you're, you're essentially, you know, trusting them. Those are things to be very careful about in the weight loss community, in the weight loss sphere in general, the diet culture in general. There are so many people taking opportunities to try to sell you something because they have the answer and that is just BS. I've said it before and I'll say it again and I'll continue saying it on my channel that there is no answer. There's no one answer, one thing, one diet, one food, one pill, one anything that will get you from point A to point B flawlessly. There is no cookie cutter way to do this. Sometimes things work for some people and sometimes they don't. Sometimes eating a lot of fruit can be beneficial for one person and can literally cause somebody to, to gain weight. And, and you're like, it's just fruit. It's natural fruit. There's so many different things that we need to figure out individually about our bodies that you cannot trust any cookie cutter program. You can't. If it's just do this thing I did and you'll have, you'll have results too. You just can't. You can't. You have to put in the work to figure out what works for you. You can't strictly follow somebody's diet plan and expect it to work the same for you because it just doesn't work like that. And when we boil things down to being keto's the answer or the potato diet is the answer or you know drinking nothing but protein shakes and eating broccoli is the answer, whatever is being force fed into you, it doesn't mean that that's the case. It just, it's not that simple. Also keep in mind when somebody says they're going to tailor an individual program for you. One, is this person certified? Why am I using my pinky? Is this person certified in any way? Are they a registered dietitian or nutritionist? Do they have any information to really back up what they're saying? Because if you really start looking into some of these things, it's just somebody who lost weight and is now telling you that they're going to tailor a program for you, but they have no education or no background to support the ability to do that. Like with anything with social media, you really need to take things with a grain of salt and you need to do your own research and you need to fact check things. It's so easy to fall for things when they're being marketed to us as an easy fix or they're being shown with these amazing pictures. Maybe they're before and after pictures or result pictures or just, you know, a beautiful Instagram picture that somebody took and it makes you want to trust them. I, it's so easy to fall for that stuff, but it is so, so important that people do their own research and, and you don't fall for that stuff because it's curated with the intent to make money. Now I'm not saying every Instagram post or every Facebook post is trying to scam you out of money. Certainly I don't, <laughs> I don't post very often, but when I do, I really do try to just do a snapshot of something that's going on in my life or something that I'm eating. Um, and there's a lot of accounts out there that do that. There are a lot, a lot of accounts that are just trying to document their process. So it's not all a scam. But when we're talking about that, we do need to keep in mind that just because one person does something does not mean that we should do it or that it will work for us. And so that's something that I'm gonna keep coming back to is just because somebody is having success with something does not mean that they have any right to give advice. And it doesn't mean that you should look to them as an example. I think, again, it's data. It's, it's something that you can see, oh, this person is doing this. Let's see how that works with my life. Let's see what my doctor says about this. You know, you can, you can extrapolate from there, but again, just because somebody is doing something does not mean it's it's what you should be doing. And you certainly should never be in a position where you feel like you're doing something wrong because you're comparing what you are doing to what someone else is putting out there on social media. Take it as data, do some research, do some experimenting with yourself, with your body, and and go from there. Take it as inspiration, maybe, as a bouncing off point. Kind of along the same lines, we're talking about how somebody is doing something 
And that doesn't necessarily mean it's what you should be doing. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they have any authority or any reason to be able to give advice to somebody else. This is what I experience on Facebook a lot. And it happens in a lot of different weight loss surgery groups, a lot of communities out there, but I see it the most in the Mexico Bariatric Center Facebook page. So I'm going to preface this. I am fully aware that there are probably a chunk of people who watch my channel who have found me either through that Facebook page or are also on the Facebook page and watch my videos. I, I am fully aware that I might be upsetting people because what I see are a lot of people agreeing with each other and forming an echo chamber that I feel is problematic and potentially even dangerous sometimes. So I'm going to say that this is just my opinion and my experience with this. And if you find that page to be very, very helpful to you, um, maybe you do your own fact checking, maybe you do your own filtering of the content and skip over things that seem like BS. Um, in that case, that you know, I mean, this is just my opinion. I'm not going to tell anybody that I don't think that they should use the Facebook page or, or that there's anything else better for them. I, I just want to really discuss a couple of things that I've seen on this Facebook page that are really bothersome and really unhelpful, especially to newbies who are trying to get information and getting a lot of of stupid information or wrong information. My number one complaint with Mexico Bariatric Center has been their communication and lack of information. Now, if you go on your own to their website and poke around, they actually have quite a bit of information out there. Some of it's conflicting and they will tell you that it's old information that hasn't been updated yet. And that's very annoying to me. Um, it's one of the reasons why you get people who are confused about the process because they have some old things still posted on their website and some new things and the, the information literally is conflicting. One example being the pre-op diet. They said that you can only have either half a banana or a half a cup of berries a day. Um, but then later on, they tell you an example meal plan and they tell you to have a snack of apples and almond butter. I can't tell you how many times I've seen questions regarding this. Are you allowed to eat fruit? Are you allowed to eat apples? Why does it say only berries and bananas, but then tells you to eat apples? And I'm one of them. I emailed the nutritionist and I'm like, can I eat apples? And the answer was you can have a half a cup of any fruit per day. I feel like that is super easy to change on the website, especially if there's so many questions being asked about it, but they're just not very good at getting information across. Now, they do give you packets of information to go through, to read, to sign before you set a date and pay for your surgery. And I do see a lot of comments that suggest that people aren't thoroughly reading their paperwork, which is just mind blowing to me. Read your paperwork. This is a, it's a surgery in another country. For God's sakes, read your paperwork. That's another, that's just another thing. The point is, <laughs> they're not that great at getting information across. And when they heavily rely on this Facebook support page for people to get information and to share their experiences. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that. I love the idea of having a community of people who are both looking into the surgery and who have already gone through the process to be able to give you, you know, pointers or their experience with things. The main problem I have is that it appears that this Facebook page is largely unregulated. There are just a few admins and most of the time it looks like they have to be tagged or brought into a conversation if there's any reason for them to be there. And there seems to be one moderator. I'm not entirely sure if she's a moderator. And if she doesn't catch something or if she doesn't see something as being inappropriate or wrong, then it's 
it's just not caught. And not that I think that there's a lot of things that necessarily need to, um, you know, be moderated and, and stopped on the page. But one of the things that happens is medical advice. And that just blows me away. There's so much medical advice going on on this Facebook page by people who are untrained. Sometimes you get a nurse or somebody who has direct experience with something that maybe they're lending some important information or, you know, a good perspective. But for the most part, you have somebody who's asking a medical question about something that happened to them after surgery and a plethora of answers from normal ass people who seem to think that they either know what's going on and they're going to tell you, there goes the pinky again. What am I doing? They either know what's going on, they think they know what's going on, and they're going to tell you exactly what's happening, or you're getting like all this conflicting information from a bunch of different people who are just armchair doctoring. An example that happened the other day was somebody who said that she passed out and her husband and her daughter were trying to rouse her and deal with her and she was in a catatonic state rocking back and forth and non-responsive and she didn't remember any of it and she was wondering what that could have been my first response was you need to talk to your doctor this sounds like something that you should ask a doctor and the vast majority of the answers were telling her that it was probably low blood sugar and she should drink some juice there are definitely overlaps with what she was describing that could be that kind of an issue. I mean, that's, I'm not saying that's not what happened, but she ended up not going to her doctor and then just telling people, if this happens to you, you should just drink some juice. I feel better and moving on with her life and never getting anything addressed, especially that she passed out and fell down. I mean, that alone, you should probably go to a doctor and make sure everything is okay and you didn't hit your head or anything. I get infuriated when I see things like this because in my opinion, Mexico Bariatric Center should be moderating these comments and they should be turning comments off and recommending for people to talk to their medical liaison or to their own doctors when something like this happens. And what I see more often than not is people just relying on Facebook for information. I see people ask not only the same questions over and over, but questions that you should probably research in a different forum. If you have questions that are not really directed at what was your personal experience with this. You shouldn't be getting your information from Facebook because what you're doing is opening the door for a bunch of people to give you potentially wrong information because they either think they know and they don't or they've been given wrong information and they're just continuing to spread it. The same issue with Facebook that everyone has in any situation, the spread of misinformation like wildfire, fake news and bad advice being spread around because nobody takes the time to fact check it and stop it before it gets spread further. The same thing is happening in every group, every page, everything on Facebook. And Mexico Bariatric Center's support group is no exception. I've seen a lot of misinformation being spread. A big one is that your body can only absorb up to 30 grams of protein at a time. And if you are ingesting more than 30 grams of protein, then it's completely wasted. And one person said that you pee it out, you pee out extra protein, which is just not only completely wrong, but it's misinformation that has been out there from bodybuilding communities. Communities. And so there is a missing piece of context to that that people don't understand and so they keep spreading around. There's no point in having more than 30 grams of protein because your body can't possibly absorb it. That's not true. Just because I'm on the topic and just to get it out there, your body can't use more than 30 grams of protein at a time to synthesize muscle. So if you are trying to build muscle, if you are a bodybuilder, more than 30 grams of protein at a time to help build and synthesize your muscles is not going to help, but that protein isn't wasted. Your body uses protein for tons of stuff, tons and tons of stuff. And in our situation, a lot of times protein is broken down into energy because we are 
naturally eating a lower carb. Not to mention essential amino acids and everything else that you get from protein. It's not wasted. But this stuff keeps getting spread around because somebody heard it somewhere and they're spreading it to somebody else. I'm gonna wrap this up soon, but another big one I see that I really feel like I have to comment on is people talking about the pre-op diet and the number of people that I have seen blow off the pre-op diet. When somebody is coming to this Facebook group looking for advice on how to get through the pre-op diet or looking for advice because they are severely craving something and they're not sure they can get through the pre-op diet or that they did eat something they weren't supposed to and they're super scared that they messed something up, a lot of the advice that is given is, well, I didn't really even do the pre-op diet and I was fine. Oh, I cheated a whole bunch on the pre-op diet, but I, I was able to get my surgery and everything was fine. I'm not gonna get into the reasons why that's such stupid, shitty information to give. I'm not. I think the idea is that they're making people feel better like, oh, it's okay if you ate that, you probably didn't screw th things up, you'll be able to have your surgery, you know, kind of making people feel better. But that's never really how it's it's given. One person asked the other day um, if anybody cheated on their pre-op and they were feeling really down about it because they had a day where they ate things they weren't supposed to. And one person's response was, we all did. I didn't don't speak for me. <laughs> I took this extremely seriously. And I'm not saying that somebody who makes a mistake isn't taking it seriously or isn't doing something right. But I had days where I cried because I was hungry or because I didn't want to eat the thing that I had to eat or because I was super emotional and had to completely change my lifestyle for eight weeks. I had days I was miserable. I had days where I ran out and I was eating rotisserie chicken in my car because I was starving and I didn't know what to eat for a snack while it was out and about doing errands. I was miserable sometimes on the pre-op diet because I refused to give in because I really felt like not only was it important for me to go forward with this, with the right mentality, but I didn't want to screw anything up before surgery. I wanted to be as healthy and ready for surgery as possible beforehand. And if they said that means I needed eight weeks of this very restrictive diet, then I was going to. When I did research and saw that if people sometimes who go and get this surgery done in the US through insurance have to go through two or three weeks of a pure protein shake diet, I mean, I am glad I didn't have to do that. I don't even know how you could get through several weeks of just a liquid diet pre-op. I don't know. I don't know how you could do that without going insane. Perspective, man, perspective. I'm gonna wrap this up because I honestly could probably keep going on for a long time based off of the things that I keep repeatedly seeing on Facebook pages in general. I don't I don't want it to seem like I'm just bashing Mexico Bariatric Center's Facebook page because I do think that this is a, a social media problem and not just them. I am extremely disappointed uh, that they don't really moderate and um, and curate some of the content that, that is being put out there so that it's not quite full of so much bad advice or, or people being idiots, but it's up to us to recognize that. It's up to us to decide to take things with a grain of salt and not get our information from Facebook because no matter how well-intentioned someone may be, it's just a person behind a keyboard giving you an answer. It is not necessarily good medical advice. It's not necessarily something that has been researched. It's just somebody who decided to sit down at their keyboard or their phone, I guess it's probably more likely their phone, and type out an answer to you. So it's up to us to determine what may or may not be good information and really seek other sources, medical sources, researched, peer-reviewed sources to get our information. Yeah, it adds extra work to your plate. Instead of just asking and having 41 people respond within 15 minutes to your Facebook post, the problem is, is although you may get quick answers on Facebook, there's no telling if you're getting good answers on Facebook. So the moral of the story is if you're looking at 
social media, if you're turning to social media to get some information about this surgery, about post-op life, just take it with a grain of salt and really do your own fact checking and really think about what people are putting out there and the motivations they may have behind putting things out there and just be smart. Be smart and, and make your own decisions. It's really important. It's really, really important to be properly educated, you guys. And it is so easy for this BS and, and bad information, bad advice to spread around. And um, I think it needs to stop with us. We all need to set each other up for success. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Sorry, this was kind of a ranty, upset video, but um, I just feel like I had to get that off of my chest. It's been really bothering me for several months now. <laughs> so I'll come at you next week, most likely with an educated, much more uh, thought out video. <laughs> and you can just skip on past this one if you didn't like what I had to say or if you don't agree. That's totally fine. I, I completely understand. So thanks so much. I hope you guys are having a great week and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.